Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Brentwood Secondary College Open Night live stream. My name is John Baller, and I'm very proud to be the principal of Brentwood Secondary College. Tonight, I'll also be acting as the host of our live broadcast. Now, our live stream tonight has been designed to replace our traditional open night so that we are still able to connect with the broader community who might be interested in our school for their children sometime in the future. Now, whilst we're really excited about tonight's event and the numerous future possibilities it may bring to connecting with our community, this is brand new for us and we hope that it goes very well tonight, but please be in understanding if things don't go 100% as planned. So tonight, we have a combination of live and pre-recorded presentations, followed by a live Q&A segment. So at any time during the presentations, you're able to ask questions by going to menti.com and entering the code 784294. This information will be on the screen at various times throughout the broadcast, and Evan Miller, one of our associate principals, will be reading all of the questions and will use these to host a Q&A session later in the evening. To help him out, if you see a question that somebody else has already asked and you too would like to know the answer to that, please like it by hitting the thumbs up icon. That will help us prioritise questions later on. A little tip for families that are watching at home, you might like to log on to Menti on a second device so that you can still watch the information being presented while also keeping track of the questions that people are asking. We will also be placing a copy of tonight's stream on our website so that you can come back and view it at a later date. So let's get started with a pre-recorded presentation from our college captains. Good evening everyone and welcome to Brentwood Secondary College's Open Night for 2020. My name is Ricky Armstrong and I have the honour of being one of your 2020 college captains. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Wurundjeri and Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging and to any of the Aboriginal elders of other communities that may be present today. We hope that tonight gives you a brief overview of our home Brentwood and that you all really enjoy it. I personally would like to focus on the great variety and quality of the leadership opportunities here at Brentwood, as well as the passion and dedication that the school has in providing its students with amazing opportunities outside of school. Right from year seven, Brentwood has had a strong focus on building and utilising its leaders. I remember in my first weeks at the school being given the opportunity of being a home group captain, which gave me a small taste of leadership without being too overwhelmed, and of joining the debating team. These amazing positions, as well as other various that have been, that have been made available throughout my schooling, such as year level captain, SRC member, green team member, house captain, library monitor, and a multitude of others that the school offers, have all helped me grow as an individual and as a leader. They have taught me the benefits of hard work, integrity, and most of all, having great personal connections with those around me, aspects which the entire school embodies. Not only does Brentwood value its school leadership opportunities extremely high, but it also fights hard to give its students the best opportunities available. Teachers at this school encourage students to apply for programs like the Youth of the Year, Conley Dow and Monash Scholars Program, of which I am a part of, and can honestly say, without the encouragement and support of the staff at Brentwood, I would never have applied for it on my own. The school works tirely, tirelessly to provide the best opportunities it can for every student, to grow them not just as students, but also as a person. The World Challenge Duke of Edinburgh and Language Exchange programs produce such enormous changes in their participants that everyone returns a different person, and different in all the right ways. I honestly and truly believe that Brentwood is one of the best places, let alone schools, to learn leadership skills and to grow as an individual. I'm not just saying that, it has truly shaped who I am as a person and in all the best possible ways. Good evening everyone. My name is Devika and I have the honour of being one of Brentwood's 2020 school captains. When I first came to Brentwood, I'll admit, I was overwhelmed with feelings of anxiety. Then I was introduced to the Peer Support Program and I admitted the extent that Brentwood went to to ensure a smooth transition from primary to secondary school and this is when I knew that Brentwood was the place for me. This motivated me to take on the role of senior leader of the program in years 10 and 11, in which I created bonds with junior students and reinforced the family-like atmosphere instilled in the Brentwood community. The thing I love most about this community is the unconditional love and support from teachers and staff here. 
This love that students witness is then embodied within the cohort itself and then subsequently transcending into the wider community. For instance, when I was a junior captain of the grade team, the sustainability group at Brentwood, we were fortunate enough to be supported by various teachers to initiate a Christmas affair, which collected non-perishable items for the community to donate and spread love to those in less fortunate circumstances in accordance with the Salvation Army. Moreover, when you observe the structure of Brentwood itself, the well-being department who provide support throughout the school day are located right in the middle of the school, implicating that the student's health and well-being is the focal point for Brentwood. Furthermore, as a part of the Student Representative Council at Brentwood, I was presented the opportunity to participate in the World Vision 40 Hour Family Magpie Challenge. Living in another person's shoes or backpack provided me the insight into a new and different perspective, all because Brentwood pushed me to go outside of my comfort zone. Speaking of zones, as a part of Brentwood's Japan Exchange Program with our sister school Ono Senior High School, I was fortunate enough to host a student when we attend. I love this experience because appreciating small cultural differences such as different eating utensils, study habits and interests, regardless of the language barrier, is a taste of life after Brentwood, as our community is filled with a multitude of diversity. Therefore, I am beyond grateful for Brentwood into shaping me into not only a better student or member of the community, but a better version of myself. Brentwood has become a second home over the years and we hope that you join our family. Thank you for listening. Good evening everyone. My name is Biddy Korgatha and I have the privilege of being one of the college captains at Brentwood this year. Thinking back to when we were choosing a high school, Brentwood was the obvious choice because to be honest, it was convenient. It was close by and my sister was already here so there weren't really any questions about it. But I am so, so thankful that Brentwood was our go-to because not only has it allowed me to develop as a person, it has also helped me so much academically. I was lucky enough to be one of the pioneers of the enrichment program at Brentwood. The enrichment program ensured the perfect start to our learning journey here as it consistently challenged us as learners and never let us settle for anything less than our best efforts. Although the program only goes from year seven to nine, it sets up students for even more opportunities further along the way, like Year 10 Enrichment Maths and Science. For those of you already thinking about BCE, it put me in a better position to undertake two advanced placements, which I must say has definitely taken a great weight off my study load for Year 12. Of course, behind everyone's academic progress are the amazing teachers that we have at Brentwood. I am constantly in awe of all the effort and commitment they can constantly put into our learning. You know, the thing about teachers at Brentwood is that they really care. And we are so, so lucky to have their unwavering support. In year eight, I made the decision to stay at Brentwood rather than go to a select entry school. And honestly, that has been one of the best decisions that I have ever made. Just two years in, I knew that Brentwood would be the place where I could best flourish as an individual and as a learner because of the learning environment that Brentwood prides itself on building. When I told my teachers about my decision, one of them said to me, actually, she promised me that Brentwood would take care of me. And it really has. All of my achievements, both academic and personal, I can owe to Brentwood and the opportunities that I was given here. Brentwood always has and will continue to bring out the best in me, and I'm confident that it will do the same for you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hayden Brown, and I'm one of the school captains for 2020. For me, I fell in love with the sport straight away. Being state champion in cricket in year seven, I instantly fell in love with the teachers, staff, resources, and all my mates around me. For me, I had a tough time after that. Being expelled nearly twice in year eight, I found myself in a dark spot. But when I started year nine, I started to turn a corner. With the encouragement of peers and teachers, I started to see the world in different light with the idea of the less being more. And at this school, it's encouraged highly. On Duke of Ed, that one week like I did was the best week of my life. As I started to get perspective on life outside of school and what it means to be a at this school. The leadership perspective and knowledge I learned from Duke of Ed taught me how to apply those abilities into the Brentwood community, which of course helped me, helped me connect with more like-minded people and understand them to have a positive impact around school. So to say that Brentwood has changed my life for the better is an absolute understatement.
Thank you, Ricky, Vidi, Navika and Hayden. Now, they're currently at home, like most students in Victoria, engaged in remote learning, but I'd like to thank them for taking the time to record their messages to you. We're really proud of each of them and the different journeys they have had so far at Brentwood. And I'd like to say at this stage too that thank you for all the questions that are being posted so far and keep engaging with our mentee. Uh, Mr Miller is working through them tirelessly at the moment. I'd now like to provide a general oversight of our school for you as part of my principal's address. Firstly, I hope that we're able to convey to you tonight the pride that I and the other presenters have of our school. And in normal circumstances, I'd be inviting you on a tour of our school to see it in action and share with you what the Brentwood School community is all about. However, obviously, this isn't possible at the moment, but when we are able to run tours again, please come and visit, and I or another member of the principal team will look forward to taking you on a tour. In my brief address tonight, I'd like to give you a general overview of the school and insight into our vision for Brentwood and our community and a glimpse of the Brentwood culture that we are so very much proud of. So as a school, we turned 51 in 2020 and last year was our, obviously our 50th year. In terms of student numbers, we have approximately 1,690 students at the school at the moment and we are a capped school of 1,650 students. So we are slightly over our cap um, and enrolments are restricted as a consequence of that. Having said that, we are very proud that a number of our families obviously come from within our Brentwood zone and so do a number of families who are outside our zone choose Brentwood as their preferred school for their children. We are a school with strong, a strong academic program and a broad range of pathways that you'll hear later this evening. We have high expectations of everybody in our school community. We expect our students to strive towards achieving their best and I certainly know that our staff are incredibly professional and have high expectations of themselves as well. Our senior pathways, as I mentioned, have grown over recent years. We have a broad VCE program, an expanding VET program, and as of next year, we'll be offering the Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning. And we very much value the relationship and the partnership between parents, teachers and the students. As a principal and leadership team, we spend a lot of time focusing what we hope to see our students achieve as a learner and as a person. And it's important that as a school community we realise that for students to be best prepared for their future, they need to not only have the knowledge to take with them, but the skills and self-understanding or awareness so that they're able to get the best out of themselves. Getting a high ATAR score or simply getting into university isn't enough. Our students need to develop themselves as a person so that they're able to take advantage of the future learning opportunities or pathways that extend beyond Brentwood. As I said, being a great student or learner isn't enough on its own and nor is being a wonderful person who doesn't engage in lifelong learning. At Brentwood, our students have the opportunity to achieve both and we very much value that holistic educational experience. And it's important to acknowledge that this is the entire school community that works towards developing these qualities. And I see this in action when I walk around the school each day. When I visit classrooms, I see students who want to achieve their best. I see teachers who are passionate, professional and continually go above and beyond to push their students by delivering high quality lessons. And I can honestly say that out of the, the three schools that I've been involved in, the Brentwood staff are are incredible. They work tirelessly for their students for them to achieve their best. Our parents are supportive of their children's learning and are very active within our school community. I see an environment at Brentwood where positive relationships are the norm. They are the foundation on which our students feel safe and connected at school. They are the foundation on which our teachers can challenge students to go outside of their comfort zone, take risks with their learning and push them to reach their potential. We expect our students to achieve their best and this won't happen if students aren't connected to their school and to their teachers. It's also this sort of environment that allows students to engage in the vast number of extracurricular activities at Brentwood, which ensures our students don't just achieve academically, but develop into well-rounded young adults, which typically our Brentwood students do. And as principal of Brentwood, probably something that was a highlight for me last year that really demonstrated what the Brentwood culture was about in developing the learner and the person was our 50th celebrations. We invited the community into our school on a Friday evening in March of last year and about 5,000 people turned up to the school. When I was talking to the people who were here at the school and reflecting on their time at Brentwood, they reflected on, not just on the, um, the knowledge and the skills that they had gained over their six years at Brentwood, 
but they remembered fondly about the, the people they had met, the friends they had made, the teachers that they had had and the experiences that they had had on their time at Brentwood. And those experiences had shaped them to be successful in their future endeavours. And that's what we hope for all Brentwood students when they finish Year 12. Now, whilst we focus very heavily, as I said, on what happens in the classroom to support each student, and you'll hear a snapshot about that later tonight, we have a very strong extracurricular program which helps develop that learner and person that I've been talking about. These opportunities for students not only develop them as individuals, but also connect them to our community. Students who are connected to their school community do better at school. And we have numerous opportunities from a, a large sports program, an increasing music program, an award-winning performing arts program, outstanding student leadership program, and a number of clubs and other activities that run on a frequent basis. We also have an extensive camps program that operate both locally within Victoria, and when we're able to travel again overseas, they'll be heading abroad, whether it's through World Challenge or to our sister schools in Japan and Germany. These experiences are what help shape our Brentwood students and are greatly valued by our school community. So what does developing the learner and the person look like? Well, our vision for learning that you can see on the screen simply states that we learn as a connected community to grow as individuals who are future ready. And I want to take a little bit of time to unpack what this means to us at Brentwood. In terms of a connected community, that's around collaboration. Students working in teams with each other and with their teacher. And even though we're learning remotely at the moment, we're still doing this via the digital technologies that we have in our curriculum. And we are a school that's well resourced in with our one-to-one -one laptop program and use digital technologies to connect our community during the day, even remotely or when we're back operating normally, but also to keep that connection outside of the normal school hours as well. Our students connect with the Monash Tech School. We have students participating in the School for Student Leadership program. And we have a range of other programs where students connect with community organisations. We talk about growth with our students because performance um, simply isn't enough for our students. We have a number of high performing students at our school that achieve great academic results. What's important is that they continue to improve, continue to challenge themselves and continue to grow as a learner and as a person. And that's something that we value greatly as a school. We also value each student as an individual and we value that each student understands themselves as a learner and as a person and this helps them make some choices in their learning and their future pathways. It also helps teachers get to know each individual student in supporting them in making their choices. That student voice and agency in their learning is critically important to their success. And being future ready, well that's what we're about. That when students leave Brentwood, they're ready for whatever the future holds. And we know, and we're experiencing in 2020, that our world is changing very quickly. And the skills and knowledge and attributes that our students develop need to prepare them for that future world that is forever changing. And this vision is a really powerful statement and one that we talk about a lot. But I guess what does that look like from a student perspective? When I ask our students what their experience is like at Brentwood, and particularly our Year 12s when they're finishing um, in, in November, December of each year, some of the things that they talk about that reminds us that we are striving and achieving this vision is that they, when they reflect on how safe and supported they've felt at school, when they talk about how well known they are by their teachers, that they've been challenged and prepared to take risks with their learning, that they've had that voice in their learning that I spoke about before, and that they're ready to take those next steps beyond Year 12, whatever that may be. And they can reflect on their own personal growth, just like I spoke about with the past students who attended our 50th celebrations. That sense of achievement, sense of growth, and they've still got that connection back to their school. That's what our vision is about, and that's what our vision for learning hopefully achieves. For our parents, hopefully that means that they've been an active part of their, their child's journey over the six years that they've been well informed about where their child is at in their learning and how they're progressing. They see their child get challenged and then succeed. They see their child's teachers um, supporting them and engaging them in their learning. And they're confident and they're proud members of our community. They were given opportunities to engage in the school and contribute to making Brentwood an even better community than it already is. As you can see, being at Brentwood is very much about valuing both our learning and community through positive relationships so that each student and every student can flourish and be the best person and learner they can be. As a school, we've been doing this proudly for 51 years 
and we're certainly planning on doing this even better in the future. So I hope through tonight's presentations and Q&A sessions that we're able to convey some of this to you. And that's probably enough for me at this point in time, so I would like to introduce you to our Year 7 leaders who have pre-recorded a message for you tonight. So I'd like to introduce you to Archer, Ava and Benedict. Hi, I'm Archer. I'm the Year 7 House Captain for Lorita. I'm going to be discussing health athletics and my favourite subject. My Brentford experience has been so enjoyable. The teachers are really helpful and very clear with their decisions. They put so much effort and care into us with their learning. Brentwood is a very sporty school with lots of opportunities in a range of different sports. On the 13th of March, Brentwood had its athletics carnival. It was perfect weather to compete and try your hardest for your house. It was a highly spirited day with everyone wearing their house colours except the year 12s who dressed up in a crazy fashion. We also had a barbecue with all profits going to the state school relief charity. On the day, the green team collected aluminium cans. They collected 830 and gave them to recycling. There was a house winner announced at the end and it went right down to the wire. The winner was Warrisar, who won by four points to Waddle. That has, been probably one, that has probably been one of my highlights so far. Being a huge sporting, sporting fan, I thought my favorite subject was going to be PE. And I thought my least favorite subject was going to be German because I knew nothing about it. And PE is really fun and I'm enjoying it. But after doing a term at Brentwood, my favorite subject would now be German. I love that you, that you get to speak it and how, how it sounds such like English. In the first term, I've already learned, learned so, so many phrases, including what's your name, your hobbies, your telephone number, mail address, where you live, how's it going, how are you, and what class you're in. German has been a fantastic subject, so now I'm going to speak some German. Ich heiße Arche. Ich bin in der Klasse 7 as well. Mir geht's. Ich bin glücklich. Bis später. To translate, I just said, my, na my name is Archer. I'm in the class 7 R2. How's it going? I'm happy. See you later. Thanks for listening and all for the students attending Brentwood next year. I wish you all the best for your exciting times ahead because to remember to take all your shots that, you that come your way because you only get one shot at high school. Hi, my name is Ava and I'm the Year 7 Captain for Waterhouse. House. Today I'll be sharing a few highlights from the year along with some advice for our future Year 7s. Something that I've really enjoyed so far this year is camp. On the 24th of February, 296 Year 7s attended a three-day camp at Phillip Island Adventure Resort. Camp was an amazing opportunity and really helped everybody to conquer their fears as well as to gain more trust and friendship with one another. It was also great as there were a variety of fun and challenging activities to take part in. There were also great room facilities and delicious meals. Overall, I had a great experience at the Phillip Island Adventure Resort Camp and it wouldn't have been better without the peer support and amazing staff. Not only did our year 10 peer support leaders come to camp with us, but they've also been running peer support lessons for us every week. These have been great fun and have really allowed us to get to know more about our school and one another. We also get to play many fun games, such as celebrity heads, heads down, thumbs up and four corners. I've really been enjoying our peer support lessons so far and can't wait to see what our peer support leaders have planned for us to do in the future. As a year seven at Brentwood Secondary College, my advice for our future year sevens is to try your best and have a go. You should show enthusiasm and put effort into everything you do. You never know what you're capable of unless you try your hardest. In conclusion, I'd like to talk about my experience as a year seven student at Brentwood. I'm still fairly new to Brentwood, but the two months that I've spent here at Brentwood Secondary College have been amazing. I made so many great friends and learned so many new skills. I'm grateful for all the opportunities we've been offered. My experience at Redwood so far has been great. I look forward to the rest of the year. Thank you for listening. Hi, I am Benedict, the Year 7 House Captain for Jacaranda. I am fairly new to Brentwood, but I am loving it already. 
I'm going to share a couple of highlights from Year 7 so far, as well as some advice for future Year 7s and something I'm looking forward to this year. Something I've realised this year at Brentwood is that Brentwood is a very tech-savvy school. Everyone owns a laptop and has Microsoft Office installed on their device. Microsoft Office consists of a variety of programs, but we mainly use Microsoft Word, OneNote, Teams and PowerPoint. These programs allow us to complete our work digitally and allow us teachers to set homework or classwork tasks efficiently. For example, OneNote is a digital notebook that every student can access. Teachers can upload work into the digital class notebook, which can be accessed by students 24-7. Teams is another great application that we use. It is the platform that allows students and teachers to communicate effectively. These apps are useful when students are absent because they can see the work that has been set for them easily. Another highlight of this year is Brentwood's music program. There are multiple bands that are offered to students based on skill level. There is a jazz band, concert band and many ensembles. I am part of a concert band and not only have I enjoyed playing my instrument, I've also made a few friends. Music lessons are also offered to students. They are great because while the student may miss a bit of class time, the music lesson is never in the same period each week. This ensures that they are not missing out on the same class every week. And as I was saying before, Teams and OneNote also make sure that students can catch up on any work that they may have missed. My advice for any future year students is to grasp every opportunity that is given to you. Try for leadership positions or for a sports team. Brentwood has numerous learning opportunities, so there must be one that is right for you. I am looking forward to the performances and the competitions that the concert bands are participating in this year. There will be a great opportunity to show our efforts and commitment to the band, as well as being able to perform as a group for the first time. Thank you for listening, and to any future students, I wish you the best of luck at Brentwood. Thank you, Archer, Ava, and Benedict. I'd now like to hand over to Mr. Evan Miller, one of our associate principals, who's going to talk about the transition process from grade six into year seven. Thanks, John. I'm Evan Miller, one of the associate principals here. Before I talk about the process, I just want to say thank you for all of the questions that have been coming through. I just noticed one question about is anyone answering the questions. We're going to have a, a live Q&A session at the end um, and we'll be addressing some of those questions as we go. Can I also just remind you, if there's questions that you see um, in the, the list that you like, press that like button and that'll push them to the top of the list so we know that they're the questions that we need to address um, at the start. All right, to start to talk about the transition process. Once your child is enrolled at Brentwood, they'll be allocated to one of our four houses, Banksia, Jacaranda, Waratah or Wattle. Within each house, we have a head of house who is a leading teacher and a house leader at year seven, year eight, year nine, and two house leaders who share years 10, 11 and 12. All families are allocated to the same house as much as possible. Our house system is a structure we use to get to know our students well and gives our parents a key contact at the school with a house leader and a head of house supporting your child. The house system is also the way we build our strong positive culture with a house cup awarded at the end of the year to the house that has been awarded the most points for participating in a range of different activities throughout the year. To help us get ready for the new cohort of students and prepare students for high school, we have a few key events that occur before the start of the new academic year. We engage with our primary schools to collect data to inform our planning and we run PAT testing uh, with all of our new students. This helps us in planning, um, organising and organising our class groupings and to find the learning starting points for all of our students. Towards the end of the year, a member of staff will visit our primary schools to meet and greet with the students who are coming to Brentwood Secondary College and this is a great chance for students to ask questions about the transition to secondary school. We run two Making Friends sessions before the statewide orientation day for students who are coming from a primary school where we have only a, um, enrolled a small number of students. And the aim of this is to make sure that every student who joins us on orientation knows at least one other student. Orientation day usually runs early December and all of our new Year 7 students will get to explore the school, meet some of their teachers while undertaking some of their subjects and participate in a range of getting to know you activities with their peers. We also run various parent information nights on a range of topics to keep our parents informed. The first information night for our new Year 7 families will be our laptop and cyber safety information night. 
Our transition program offers many opportunities for students to build relationships all throughout the school. Our wellbeing team also has the capacity to support families in times of need. At Brentwood, we have a culture of high expectations and expect everyone to strive for their best, try hard, ask for help, get involved and give things a go. We've developed our own instructional model that all teachers use in planning and delivering their lessons, which gives consistency across our classes. Work is differentiated within our classes um, and our teachers work hard to find each student's entry point for their learning. Our curriculum is delivered through Microsoft Teams and OneNote and feedback is given to students in a range of different ways. We use Compass and the Compass app as our way of communicating to all parents um, and for parents to communicate with their child's teachers. One of the best ways your child can have a rich and full experience at Brentwood is to engage in many of the wider learning experiences we have to offer at Brentwood. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Um, we'll now let Evan get back to um, working through the questions that you're posting on Menti. And Evan talked about our wellbeing team in his presentation there. And look, one of our core beliefs as a school is that for students to achieve their best as a learner in person, they must feel safe, happy and connected to their school. So our next presentation is a pre-recorded video from Mr. Brian Clements, our Director of Wellbeing. Hi there, and welcome to what is now the Wellbeing Department aspect of this online video message. My name is Brian Clements. I'm the head of the Wellbeing Department at Brentwood College. I have three colleagues who work in conjunction with me on a daily basis. They are Rod Duncan, the chaplain, Alex Luff, the social worker, and Laura Seymour, who's also a social worker. As the main team, we have and provide a comprehensive level of support on a daily basis for all our students at the college. Some of the roles that actually take place within the college are as follows. We have a year seven and year eight number of workers from the wellbeing department who are present within the year seven and year eight classes. They are there to support the teacher and support our students through some of the social and emotional or academic issues that they may be experiencing. We also provide an ongoing level of daily counselling support. We have an open door policy around this and that means that any student can come to us at any time during the day and ask for some support, ask for some help, ask for someone to talk to or just a safe space to sit, to be quiet and to reflect. In conjunction with this, we also provide a level of parent support because we understand how important and how much of a priority you as parents are to our greater community, to the support of the staff and to the development of your children and our students. At the college, we as a department work very closely and collaboratively with the education staff in order to provide a safe and secure environment for the social, emotional and educational development of every one of our students. As I mentioned previously, we do run an open door policy, so any student is welcome to come and speak to us privately, confidentially, at any time during the day. We have a very broad range of workers who work for the department every single day, Monday to Friday, at Brentwood College. They number approximately 20 in total, and as well as the three roles that I did mention around being in the classrooms, having support, counselling and parent support, there are other roles and responsibilities that they too also have. Brentwood Secondary College is a college that I am incredibly impressed by and incredibly proud to be a member of staff within. It is a very progressive and forward-thinking, dynamic college with staff whose main priority is to ensure that at the end of a student's time with us, they are well-rounded individuals and prepared to enter the broader community 
in all aspects of life, and that they can also contribute effectively as a global citizen in this ever-changing world. I hope that this very brief introduction to who we are has been helpful, and I look forward to possibly meeting some, if not all of you, at some point in the future. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Brian, for that pre-recorded video. I'd now like to introduce you to Miss Sonia Ardley, who's going to be talking about the curriculum pathways through 7 to 12, and we'll also address some of the enrichment questions that we've had already. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sonia Ardley, one of the Associate Principals here at Brentwood. You will have seen tonight on your screens displayed very proudly our vision for learning, and John spoke to it at length earlier in his introduction. That vision for learning underpins our ethos and our approach to teaching and learning. It encompasses our school values and it drives the delivery and the design of our curriculum. Here at Brentwood, we enjoy a vibrant learning community. Our students are supported and encouraged to achieve success and to pursue excellence. We use the Victorian Curriculum F to 10 syllabus as a framework for the design of our curriculum to ensure that students are prepared with the skills, knowledge and capabilities that they will need for their further studies. At Brentwood, a typical day has four periods of 75 minutes of length uh, that allows teachers to confidently and consistently deliver our instructional model, which is based on the growth principle. That allows time for teachers to explicitly teach, to uh, foster collaboration between students, have time to, for students to practice their skills, to deepen their knowledge, to reflect on their learning, set goals and receive feedback. In Year 7, all students uh, have core subjects that they undertake. These include TLC, the Thinking, Learning, Creativity Program, which is an integrated subject of English, Geography and Humanities. In addition to that, all students do Maths and Science. They do a language, either German or Japanese, and they do Digitech, Health and PE. In addition to that, they do a semester of Art and a semester of Music. In Year 8, they keep those same core subjects, but English becomes a discrete subject, standalone, and Humanities becomes a combination of History and Geography and Commerce. They also do a semester of Food, Technology and Drama. In addition to that, all students from Year 7 to 10 do an, the Aspire program, which was spoken about before by Evan Miller, a program where we really try and develop students' emotional intelligence and those soft skills that increasingly uh, tertiary universities and placements and the workplace are valuing in students. In Year 9, students can begin to select electives. And this guiding principle philosophy that we have is to allow students to have some choice in their learning and develop passions and interests that can form pathways for future study and work. These include some very specialist subjects that we are very proud of here at Brentwood and one of those is aviation and another one is the Duke of Ed program that the students spoke to at length in their earlier presentations. Uh, we also have a one-to-one -one laptop program which we're really, uh, has been a great success, particularly these last few weeks as we have transitioned to uh, remote learning. We've been able to progress our students' learning seamlessly, uh, having used the Office 365 Teams and OneNote platform for some time now. In addition to this, we have a wide range of extracurricular activities for students to extend their skills and immerse themselves in wonderful experiences. You've seen tonight in action our leaders who have spoken confidently uh, to the cameras in their presentations. Most of those students have benefited from the debating program, but the same can be said for our performing arts and our sporting programs and competitions. Assessment is ongoing at Brentwood. You heard earlier that we use Compass as a platform to communicate with parents and students. You will receive constant feedback on your child's academic progress through the learning tasks feature. Uh, tonight I'll be talking about a lot of the curriculum uh, from 7 to 12. If you'd like any more information about specific subjects that we offer, I encourage you to get onto our website and have a look at some of the handbooks that outline that curriculum in more detail for you. Now tonight we've had a lot of questions about our enrichment program. Our enrichment program runs from year 7 to 9. Once students are in the program, they see the program through to the end of year 9. We offer 50 places 
for students who perform well on the EDU test, which is an external test uh, that is offered at the end of the year. If you are interested and would like to register for the test, we ask first that you wait until you have been given an offer that you accept to attend Brentwood next year. And then you register online via a link you'll find on our website and that test happens on Sunday, September the 13th. There are a range of tests that are conducted on the day, including maths, including some writing and some reading comprehension. There are two classes that are offered. One will be a German class, one will be a Japanese class. The curriculum is different to that offered at mainstream. However, we don't advance students in their learning a full year. Instead, what we do is we focus on deepening their understanding, challenging their learning, giving them more inquiry-based learning. There is the potential, however, in Year 9 for students to be advanced in their maths learning and to partake of an advanced placement at Year 10 of a VCE maths subject. Lastly, our senior school at Brentwood offers a wide variety of VCE subjects. Again, those available in the handbook. That's the benefit of being a large school, that we have so many offerings for our students. But in addition to that, we have VET and VCAL, which are more specific vocational programs for our students. VET has been run for some time now. It's quite well established. We have strong partnerships with other tertiary, tertiary institutes to ensure our students get some very individualised programs and we'll be offering VCAL next year at Brentwood. We do enjoy great academic success, as many of you will know, at Brentwood, and whilst we are really proud of those achievements of our students, we are equally as proud of our students for graduating from Brentwood and pursuing very many varied and interesting pathways into the future, and a lot of those are very valuable contributions to society. We really live true to our vision that we ensure that our students are future ready for whatever the future may hold for them. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia, for your presentation around our curriculum. Our next segment is a, another pre-recorded video from one of our learning specialists, Andrea Palm. She's going to talk to you about our Year 7 TLC program and our literacy support program. Hello, I hope you're enjoying the inaugural Brentwood uh, virtual open night. My name's Andrea Palm and I'm the Literacy Learning Specialist here at Brentwood. Tonight I'm here to talk to you about our TLC program that we offer to Year 7 students, as well as some of our support programs, um, including literacy and numeracy support. Firstly, I'd like to introduce you to TLC. TLC stands for Thinking, Learning and Creativity. Within TLC, students are immersed in an integrated study of English, history, geography, civics and citizenship and economics, where we foster collaboration, creative and critical thinking, as well as resilience and a growth mindset. As part of TLC, we also have two enrichment classes and one specialised EAL class for students who study English as an additional language. TLC is a fantastic way to transition into high school life because the combined subject study means that students have the same teacher for TLC 10 periods over our two week cycle. That means that your child will see their TLC teacher every day of the week. This enables sound continuity and mirrors the primary school experience, which we've found helps to create an easy transition. I know from my own years of teaching TLC, the bonds that are created between students and their TLC teachers are ones that last for um, their whole schooling and beyond. And it's a subject that students always look back on really fondly. In terms of our support programs, we offer both literacy and numeracy support for students who might require some extra assistance with their literacy and or numeracy skills. We conduct PAT testing in Term 4 as a diagnostic tool to help us better understand where your child is at. And we are in close consultation with our feeder primary schools to ensure a smooth transition. If selected to participate in a literacy support program, students attend small support classes that occur three times a week in lieu of studying the language. Numeracy support is provided to students in their mathematics classes up to three times a cycle. This support is from a qualified mathematics teacher who will come into the class to work with small groups of students. 
The aim of these support programs is to work closely with students and parents to create a partnership to develop not only students' core literacy and numeracy skills, but also their critical thinking and perhaps most importantly, their belief in themselves and self-confidence. If you should require any further information about TLC or our support programs, please don't hesitate to contact the school and we'd be more than happy to um, provide you with any further information you may wish to have. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea, for your pre-recorded presentation. Now, we're almost at the live Q&A um, segment. Prior to that, and we've had a couple of questions about a virtual tour already, we have put together tonight a brief video clip that will give um, a bit of a virtual tour of our school. So I'd like to introduce that video clip now and then we'll return with our Q&A.
I'd like to thank Brenton, our Director of College Operations, for putting that virtual tour together for us tonight to give you a bit of a sense of um, our school and the buildings and, and also the students in action, which is what we all want to see. I would also like to take this opportunity to mention also that later this year we'll begin construction on our new VCE centre, which is a $4.6 million project. Hopefully will be completed by the end of 2021, open for the 2022 school year. So we're very excited about that project starting in September this year. Now it's that time of the um, presentation where we're going to go to our live Q&A. Um, this is obviously unscripted for us, so please bear with us as we work through as many questions as we can. I believe last count we've had over 105 questions on our Menti, which is fantastic. Evan Mill has been working very hard um, going through those questions. We're going to address as many as we can. We do anticipate at this point in time that we will go beyond our 8pm um, because of the volume of questions. So I'd now like to hand over to Evan for our first question this evening. Thank you, John. Um, thank you, everyone, for the questions. We are at 110 questions. Um, there are some that are very similar, so um, I'm going to try and we'll try and group some of the answers together. The first question I'm going to throw over to, back to John, um, and uh, it's around the enrolment process. So um, I'm going to put this on the screen. Do you have to live in the Brentwood zone to be enrolled. Um, and John, I might also get you to talk about the, the timeline of the enrolment and the, the process that families need to go through as well. Okay, thanks Evan. Well, the short answer there is no, you don't need to live in the Brentwood zone to be enrolled. Um, we follow the Department of Education and Training's guidelines around placing students into Year 7 at Brentwood. And essentially this is outlined on our website for you to go and view. But basically when we make offers of placement at Year 7, we prioritise to families who do live within the Brentwood zone. And you can go onto the findmyschool.vic.gov.au website and that will tell you if Brentwood is your local neighbourhood secondary school. If it is, then you are zoned to Brentwood and have a right of entry into our school. The second level of priority is siblings. So that's existing families at Brentwood. And to qualify as a sibling, you must have two students here at the same time. So it's not a case of a Year 12 exiting at the end of this year and then a Year 7 coming in. They would both need to be here at the exact same time. And then our third um, priority would be families outside of the Brentwood zone. And they are prioritised simply on distance from the school. So the, once we've offered to in-zone, and to siblings, we then, whatever places are left, offer to families outside of the zone with that next placement, next offering being made to the closest family to the school, then the next nearest, next nearest, and so on, until we are full. And as I said, we have a capped enrolment um, at 1,650 students, and that's the, the process in which we manage that. Um, I quite often get the question, do we look at curriculum grounds? Do we need to provide extra information about our child? Um, the answer is no. We enrol purely on, on distance from the school. We're a government school and we're very proud to serve our, our local and broader community. Um, as I said at the start, we do get a number of enrolments outside of our zone. How many we offer outside of our zone is determined on how the capacity of the school and how many places that the, the there are once in zone and siblings have been offered. Um, I think that was the question. Evan, did I miss anything else in that question there? No. Oh, I in think terms of timeline, I think you mentioned yep. around placement. Yep. So the timeline for grade six to seven um, placement has changed and because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So primary schools will be giving placement forms out to primary schools very shortly as soon as they're able to. Obviously, we all need to be a bit patient because this is a bit difficult given the current circumstances. Those forms get returned to your primary school, um, if it's a government school, by May 29, which I believe is the new date. It was originally May 15. I believe that's gone out to May 29 now because of the remote learning situation that we find ourselves in. If you're at an independent school or a Catholic school, you can get the placement form from the Department of Education and Training's website um, or possibly your school, and they get returned directly to Brentwood Secondary College. So I think I'll leave that answer there, Evan, and we might go to our next question. All right. Uh, second question. Um, there's been quite a few questions around the enrichment program, and um, apologies if these were asked before um, Sonia um, Ardley answered these, but we might just address them again because it's um, had the most one of the most likes. So um, I'm going to throw to Sonia 
um, Ardley. How do we <laughs> register for the enrichment program? Um, what's the process that we need to go through? There's a few other parts to this. What's the length of the program? Do we need to um, sit the test every year of the program okay. that we're in it? And does Brentwood have a SEAL program? Okay, so we don't have a SEAL program. Our enrichment program is essentially a SEAL program. Um, as I said before, the curriculum is different to a mainstream, but it is not accelerated. You are not learning the curriculum of the year ahead. Uh, we don't push kids through early that way. To register for the test, there will be a link available on our website in the Student Learning Curriculum tab. We ask first that you wait until you have been offered a position at Brimwood and you have accepted that offer to register because there is a fee involved with registering for the edu test, which I said earlier is an external company. Uh, we will not be accepting students who may perform really well on the test but have not been offered and accepted a place at Brentwood. So I urge you to do that. And just a reminder that they only run the test that one day, which is Sunday, September 13th. Uh, once students are in the program, they're in the program until the end of Year 9. If there are vacancies, and they do happen sometimes at the end of Year 8 when students leave for select entry schools, you no longer have to sit the test to uh, be offered a position. Instead, we look at students' uh, academic performance across all subjects to determine who, determine who we offer places to. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I'm going to take the, the next question. Um, and again, apologies if we've already answered this, but uh, it's got quite a few likes. Uh, do Grade six, 6 students have a transition program or day at Brentwood while they are in Grade 6? Yes, there's a statewide orientation day that all students attend and it's generally in December. We um, also invite the students in to do some PAT testing, which is before that day, um, and we'll communicate that out to the students once we have um, accepted the, the students. Um, and we also have those other, the Making Friends Nights um, for students coming from schools where there's not many students. Uh, we run some other activities and, and nights for them as well. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, John, I'm going to throw, we've got a question here. Do you have a school bus? I'm guessing, uh, if I can get it up on the screen, I'm guessing that might be about this, the dedicated school bus routes um, to Brentwood. Um, I'll throw to you for that one. So in terms of, we don't have our own school bus, but we are well serviced by um, the Public Transport Victoria buses and the school bus routes which we share with neighbouring um, schools. My advice to check out those bus routes would be to go to the PTV website and we will also make sure that we publish our bus route information on the details of this broadcast on YouTube and on our website so that um, families can see exactly where the buses go in terms of determining whether Brentwood's um, in a suitable location for their family. So back to you Evan. All right, uh, we've got a question here. How many students do you have per class and is it an equal mix of boys and girls? I'm going to throw to Sonia Ardley for this one. And again, thank you for the question. Uh, we offer two classes of 25 students in each class, so 50 in total. And we do ensure that there is some gender balance, uh, 10 to 15 ratio in each of those classes. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to catch up <laughs> as we go. Um, there is a question here with um, a few likes. I'll throw it back to John. Um, how much are the school fees? Um, the, the school fees um, are essentially $495 for, um, um, as our essential fees for all students at all year levels. Obviously, as you progress through um, secondary school, depending on some of the subjects that you might pick, there will be fees associated with various subjects, um, things like product design, um, technology, um, food and wood, those type of subjects that have consumable materials that the students take home, there's an added fee to study those subjects. Um, one of our most popular well, subjects in terms of questions tonight, I believe, has been around our aviation program. Um, that's a, another program that has an additional fee as a subject. So that's a, a year 10 semester-based subject called Top Gun, um, aptly named, as you um, can see. Um, the fees for that subject are, are quite expensive compared to others, and it's around the $2,500 mark. Um, for the students who choose to go into VET aviation at year 11 and 12, that's um, partnered with TriStar Aviation, who are a 
um, a private company um, that train pilots. Um, though that course is around $10,000 per year and it's a partial diploma that students complete over those two years. The aviation would be our most expensive subject. Other subjects might be $25 or $50 depending on the, the materials that the students use. So, um, so there is a, an annual fee of around about $495. Now that does change each year. It's set by school council on an annual basis but that's the current fees at this point in time. As I said, there's some subject fees as well. So I hope that answers that question there, Evan. Uh, there's, and I'm gonna, we're going to segue into the next question, John. You've, um, you've done well there. So there's been a few questions around the aviation program and you've mentioned a little bit about it. Um, I'm going to put this one on the screen. What is the aviation program and who conducts the course and what's the process for enrolling? There's been quite a few questions around do you have simulators at the school um, and, and how does the aviation course work? Okay, excellent. Well, in terms of the Year 10 program, which is where it starts, our Top Gun subject, um, we're very fortunate that Mr Chris Barry is a commercial pilot and also a teacher on staff here, and he teaches the Year 10 subject. Um, we, are, we do have two simulators here that are used for students to um, practice their skills in the classroom environment. They also do a theory component. But once a week in the afternoon, they head out to Moorabbin Airport and TriStar Aviation do the actual flight instructing for those students on a Tuesday afternoon. So um, during semester two this year, on a one afternoon a week, there'll be Brentwood students um, in the skies um, learning how to fly planes. Um, when they go to the um, U11 and 12 VET Aviation Program, as I said before, TriStar Aviation they deliver that partial diploma and their trainers come on site here. That is a subject that's offered to a number of schools. We host it here um, with a, um, a lot of our students doing that subject compared to other schools, um, but there are students from other schools too. And look, I've got to say, one of the, the greatest joys for the aviation students is when they have that experience of doing their first solo flight. Um, and I still remember last year, one of our Year 12s, Jacob, seeking me out in the schoolyard to tell me about his first solo flight, which is... Um, uh, an incredible opportunity um, and experience for a Brentwood student. So I hope that helps um, give a bit of an insight into our aviation program at Brentwood. All right. Um, we do have another enrichment question that is a high on the list. So I'm going to throw it back to Sonia Ardley. Um, as a parent, how am I best to determine if the enrichment program might be appropriate for my child? Everyone's welcome to register and undertake the test. I think the first thing you should do is have a conversation with your child and see if the program is something that will interest them. Another person to talk to will be their Year 6 teacher. They'll know your students' learning and capabilities well enough to determine whether or not this may be a suitable program to continue to challenge them and progress their learning. And also the Year 5 NAP plan results will give you an idea of where they are in relation to students' Uh, in the same year level and that will also be an indicator of how they may perform in a subject that is geared towards challenging and progressing learning. All right, uh, trying to keep on top of these questions, there's still lots <laughs> of questions here. Um, I'm interested in finding out, I'm going to put this one on, um, I'm interested in finding out some information and specs for the 2021 laptop program so I can purchase a device now to assist with homeschooling and um, absolutely understand um, the, the situation that, that we're all in. Um, the specs and information can be found on our website. So if you jump on the website, there is a document with our laptop program information. Um, I will um, just say up front that um, we have a preferred provider, Edunet, um, who have very low stock at the moment and most of the, um, the resellers have very low stock of our preferred um, models of, of laptops um, and a lot of that's because the, the devices are, um, are stuck uh, in China at the moment and, and are not coming out so just to be aware of that but if you would like any information about our laptop program please jump on the website and there is a whole lot of information there um, to find out about that program there. Uh, John, I'm going to go back to you. There's a question here with the next highest likes is how do you handle bullying at the school? Um, and look, that's a really common question that I get on our tours around the school. And look, like every single school um, across the state, across the globe, um, unfortunately there is um, from time to time bullying that occurs between students. It's um, 
know, something that as I guess as a community that um, unfortunately um, we have to deal with um, from time to time. Look, essentially, like I said, our goal is to create a safe place for our students at school. And when bullying does occur, um, we act very quickly um, in responding with that. And depending on the nature of the bullying will depend on the school's response. But typically, like most schools, um, we will offer a range of support for the, the victim um, in the circumstance. Um, and that might be through their house leader, it might be through their aspire teacher, their head of house, or one of um, the large number of wellbeing workers that we have in supporting um, that, the, that student and sometimes the family as well through those support services that we have there. If a student um, is the, the bullier, the perpetrator, of course um, we have clear school rules and expectations that every student um, is expected to follow and just like in life, um, in, when students make mistakes there are some consequences for their actions and those Consequences will um, vary on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the severity um, of the bullying and, and, and how ongoing it might be as well. And as you can all appreciate, there's a, um, quite a range of consequences that might be there. But probably what's important there too is that there's level of support um, for those, those students too. Quite often um, students um, who might be bullying are also quite vulnerable themselves as well. So we as a school will, whilst... Um, might issue some consequences, it's also a learning opportunity for that student to um, improve and we'll provide some supports and guidance to that student, work with their parents, which is really important. Like I said in my address before, the communication between home, school um, and with the student, if we're all on the same page and working together to move forward, that's when, um, that, that's when we're at our best as a school and that's when we're supporting our students at their best. So, look, it is... Um, unfortunately, bullying is evident in all schools and Brentwood's not immune. But we feel that um, we've got a range of supports in terms of staff and programs to address bullying when it occurs. We also do a lot of work through that Aspire program and through um, whether it's PE and health and a range of other areas in the curriculum to, to put some preventative um, programs in place as well. So um, I hope that addresses that question there, Evan. Thanks, John. Um, I'm going to throw it back to Sonia Ardley and um, how do you develop um, kids' ability for public speaking and presentation skills? It's not popping up on the screen. Hopefully it does. That's fine. You would have um, seen that showcase tonight with yeah. uh, some of our school captains and leaders. We do teach explicitly public speaking and debating skills in the TLC and English curricula. But in addition to that, we have a very strong debating culture at the school and our students do compete in a locally organised debating competition. We are quite often the only government school represented at those competitions and we hold our own. Uh, in addition to that, there are a number of uh, public speaking competitions. Rotary, for example, uh, run one of those. And students who do legal studies as a VCE subject uh, undertake uh, court moot experiences which allow them to debate and uh, show off their public speaking prowess. So we feel that at Brentwood this is a particular strength of our students and one that we were very proud of showcasing tonight in the presentations. The next question I've got uh, is, or we've got is going to go back to John. Um, and it is, uh, what percentage of Brentwood students obtain university access? I think this might be also a, a really good question, John, to explore the multiple pathways that we have for our students at the end of their schooling at Brentwood as well. Sure. Um, great question. And I actually got a report today from our Director of Pathways, Partnerships and Community Engagement that talked about our 2000, a class of 2019. And as, as in previous years, Generally, um, the, the class of 2019 was quite similar to those previous years. Around 75 to 80% of our students at the end of year 12 go directly into um, tertiary pathways, so university or TAFE. Um, the most popular, for want of a better term, but um, common university would be Monash University um, and Deakin, who are nearby our school, University of Melbourne, um, a large number, and RMIT as well. Um, um, the, with the 20% that don't go directly into university, there's a group there that choose to take a gap year, so they've deferred their enrolment into university. And there's also a group there that goes straight into the workforce, um, whether it's a traineeship or apprentice, apprentices as, as well. So um, we have a, um, a diverse range of pathways. Majority, as I said, of our students go into university. 
Um, but one of the things that we do know is that we're trying to prepare our students for that broad range of pathways that Evan mentioned, and that's why um, we're embarking on offering the Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning. So for that small group of students who go into the world of work post year 12, that they're better prepared for the workplace by undertaking some structured work placement through year 11 and year 12 to better prepare them for the future. And I think it's also why our VET enrolments have increased significantly over the last two years, um, where students are including a VET subject as part of their VCE program, which gives them an extra qualification and on top of their VCE, but also contributes to their study score or their ATAR score at the end of year 12. So I hope that addresses that question, Evan. I'll hand back to you. Thank you, John. Um, oh, we've got a few more that are rocketing up the leaderboard, as people <laughs> like them. Um, we've got, uh, well, probably the next highest is, how many classes are there in Year 7? I'll stay with you, John. How many classes are there in Year 7? Um, so, currently we have 14 classes in Year 7 this year, which is our largest cohort of students in the school's history. Um, as I said, we are a capped school, so if I think forward into 2021 um, and knowing that we're slightly above um, our, our cap of a number in terms of the total number of students, I would envisage that we would be looking at approximately 12 classes of Year 7s for next year would be the maximum number we could accommodate with the facilities that we have on site. Um, so that's the number of classes that we have in Year 7. The next question um, I'm going to take now, Andy Palm um, spoke about TLC as a subject, thinking, learning and creativity. Is STEM included in Year 7? Um, it used to be as a, a part of TLC, but we've separated that. We run digital technologies as a separate subject in Year 7 and Year 8. Um, that includes a lot of, um, of STEM activities and STEM learning. Um, and covers a lot of our, uh, covers the digital technologies curriculum. So uh, again, if you would like to find out more about that, please jump onto the website and have a look at the the handbooks that are available to download. Uh, I've answered that question. There's been uh, back to John. Um, there's been a few questions about our language program. Um, so what are the languages that we um, that we teach so we've talked about German and Japanese but there's also been a few questions about our um, overseas trip to um, trips to Germany and Japan and maybe that's a good opportunity to talk about our sister schools um, as well. Yeah. So as Evan said um, Japanese and German are the two languages that students can study um, at Brentwood. All students will study a language in year seven and year eight as Sonia pointed out earlier and um, students who are offered a place at Brentwood will also be given the opportunity to put a preference in for one of those two languages at year seven and eight. I'm one of the, there's a lot of great programs at our school um, and the languages is, is yet another one um, with a, a large number of students choosing to study languages in year nine all the way through to year 12 and achieving some outstanding results in year 12 in recent years. Um, and a big part of that is because we've got a strong relationship and partnership with two sister schools. We have a sister school in Germany and Japan where we take a group of students every two years over to have a cultural experience in the school and they'll also go and see some of the, the, the tourist attractions in both of those countries as well. And then in the alternating year we host um, the schools here as well and those arrangements and partnerships have been in place for 20 years, um, over 20 years for uh, Ono Senior High School in Japan and I think that's one of the, the things that really drives our languages program as well as a, a great team of languages um, teachers. Um, and certainly the numbers in our senior classes are continuing to grow at the moment which is again evidence of um, the learning experience our students are having and I think Archer gave a great example of his experience in year seven so far this year. So I hope that helps address the languages questions. Evan and I'm going to throw back to you for the next one. Yep, that's fine. Um, now my camera just turned off so we're going to stay on you John but uh, hopefully people can still hear me. Um, we had, there's been quite a few questions about sports teams and does Brentwood offer sports teams? Um, what, sport are, what sport is available um, that yeah, my child can get involved with? Yep. Um, look, sport is a, a large program and you've probably heard Hayden, our school captain, talk about um, sport being a really important aspect of his experience here at Brentwood. 
Um, a little bit like primary school, we um, offer the opportunity for all students to represent the school um, in a range of sports from AFL, soccer, badminton, table tennis, um, softball, baseball. Um, you would have seen some photos um, in our virtual tour from our annual swimming and athletics carnival. So there's a very broad range of sporting opportunities for students and we strongly encourage all students to, to represent their school in sport. And look, I quite often um, reflect on there's probably two components that I'm really proud of about sport program. One is that we have some outstanding young athletes at this school who achieve exceptional results. Um, we have some fantastic softball teams who have won a number of state titles. We have individual um, students who win state titles in athletics uh, and swimming. We have uh, other teams who do really well um, as well. Um, but we also, what's really important to me is that as many students as possible are able to represent their school and participate in sport and physical activity, um, yeah, as I said, um, as a Brentwood student. And we, our program is large, um, it is extensive. And probably one of the things that I should mention is our um, results in the state athletics, where we've you know, finished in the top five of the state for a number of years now and are certainly one of the top athletic schools, which is quite an amazing feat considering we don't have an athletic track here, um, but we do have a great team of dedicated sports um, coaches um, who, who really provide the students with those opportunities. The other thing with our sporting program is too that when students get into years nine and year 10, they have the opportunity to apply to coach a team um, themselves, which helps develop their own leadership skills yep. and coaching skills. And that's a key part of our program as well to help develop the students, not just being a, a participant, um, a sports person, but also being an active coach as well. And one of the VET programs that I mentioned before, which is relatively new to us, we're in our second year, is VET Sport and Recreation, which is a VCE subject, and that sits nicely next to VCE PE and Health and Human Development um, and our Health and PE team as well. So, yeah, there's great opportunities for students who love their sport at Brentwood. Back to you, Evan. All right. Um, I'm very conscious of the time, um, and it's 8.20, so we might do two more questions. Um, what we're also going to do is we've captured all of these questions and apologies for people that, for the questions that have been continually asked as we've been ha having this session. Um, it's been a bit hard to moderate and um, look at the questions at the same time. Um, so we'll go for two more questions and then what we'll do under this um, video on YouTube, we'll post uh, a link to more questions that we, we don't think that we've answered um, at a later date. So the next one I'm going to throw back to Sonia Ardley. Um, how do you support children with learning difficulties and what resources are available? There's also been some questions in here around um, do you modify work and how do you modify work to support students? Yeah, uh, Evan spoke earlier tonight about the amount of time that we spend in investing in trying to learn as much as we can about students that are coming to Brentwood. We do extensive testing, uh, the PAD testing, to determine their sort of starting points with their literacy and their numeracy in particular. We have those transition visits to the primary schools where we talk not only to the students but also to their teachers and we collect as much data as we can about them to identify those students that are going to need more support with their learning. And then we have a program called uh, Students, with, uh, Program for Students with Disabilities and we have integration aids in there. We spend a lot of time getting to know the students, what their needs are, talking to their parents, talking to their schools to ensure that their, their transition to Brentwood is catered for and that we have the um, information and modifications in place. Uh, I talked a lot about how we extend and challenge students in their learning, but equally we support students in their learning. Uh, we spend a lot of time professionally developing our teachers to enable them to modify student work. We have individual learning programs for students that are identified as being below uh, national standards with regards to literacy and numeracy. I also forgot to mention earlier that we have an EAL program, so students for whom English is an, is an additional language that have been in the country for less than seven years qualify for that program and also get additional support in developing their English skills. All right, and the last question 
there was a, a good question about the production, which I can't find, but I'm going to put this one up. I'm going to throw it back to John as our last question. Um, we've spoken a lot about the, um, the extra extracurricular or co-curricular activities that students can get into. Um, I remember the question was, um, what are the chances of my Year 7 student being able to uh, be a part of the college production um, next year if they come here? And maybe it's a chance to expand on any of the other activities that we may not have mentioned tonight, John. Um, a great question and I think any um, primary school student or anyone that's seen a Brentwood production, um, if they're interested in performing arts, would love to be a part of a Brentwood production. Um, certainly um, all students are offered the opportunity to, to try out to be part of the production and it, it really is um, a whole school event where um, students are involved not just performing on the stage, um, some students might be involved in part of the backstage crew. They might be helping with the, the sound and lighting team. Um, there's a range of areas um, within the school production that we strongly encourage those students who are interested in to be a part of. Um, I did mention in my address that our productions are award-winning productions and that's a culture that's been built up over many years. Um, certainly Mr B, who's our Director of Performing Arts at the moment, um, anyone who is within our community knows Mr B and knows the, the commitment that he and a number of other teachers in the school put into the Performing Arts program. So um, certainly if you're interested in Performing Arts, um, you'll be certainly familiar with the quality of um, the shows that Brentwood puts on each year um, and would you know that would be um, another example of where for another example where students connect with their school and gives them that sense of um, safety that sense of connection um, with their school and through that you know, we know that they're able to, be, to do their best learning in the classroom as well in addition to the performing arts um, in terms of the production Obviously we have um, theatre studies running through to Year 12 and we have a specialised Year 10 performing arts subject which has strong links in with the industry where we get um, the students go and view shows, they visit theatres and we'll get playwrights or directors or producers etc in to work with the students and help the students write their own plays in that particular subject. So that is a real world application type subject that supports students interested in any aspect of performing arts um, at Year 10. And the other one you heard um, Benedict, one of our Year 7 students, talk about is obviously the music program at the school where students can join any one of the number of concert bands from junior, intermediate, senior, the jazz band. Um, they might join the strings ensemble, percussion ensemble, etc. And they perform at various times throughout the year as well um, in our hall but also at um, other competitions across the state. So from... My perspective as a principal, those, like I said in my address, those extracurricular activities of music, performing arts, the student leadership opportunities which the, the house um, hub or house system um, provides students as well as the various faculties, um, arts, sports, etc., help develop our students. We have a strong sports program and all of these with the other um, co-curricular programs are a really important part of our school in developing that person, providing the students with those experiences um, to push them, challenge them and stretch them to be the best person and learner that they can be. So for, um, you know, for Brentwood students, we strongly encourage all of them to get involved in all aspects of the school life and we know that when we get that right, that our students have every opportunity to, um, to be best prepared for their future, as we've talked about with our vision for learning and our um, earlier in the, in the presentation this evening. So um, with that said, um, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to our inaugural um, live stream open night. This has been a new thing for us tonight, so I hope that it's gone relatively okay. Um, it's uh, said it's one way that we can still connect with the, the, the broader community and share what we do despite us being in, um, in that isolation type environment and remote learning. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for engaging with the questions tonight. I hope we've been able to address them. And as Evan said, those questions that we haven't been able to address, we will do so um, by posting them where this video is as well. And lastly, I'd like to acknowledge um, Brenton, our Director of College Operations, and Simon, our IT manager, who have done a whole lot of work to set up um, one of our classrooms into a, a sort of podcasting webinar studio that we're sitting in here tonight. Um, and also thank all of the presenters for their time in putting um, their presentations together so we're able to share that with you tonight. So thank you to all of those people. I hope that tonight has been of value to you and I wish you all the best in your decisions in in selecting the most appropriate secondary school for your child.
Thank you for watching and tuning in, and I hope you have a great evening. Goodbye.